Hello everyone. Hindu social religious universes have a labyrinthine complexity. If you study these universes, specifically at the grassroots, which I often do, you may feel lost, which I often do too. So, before embarking on an exploration at ground zero, it is good to steadily work through a few long-range surveys of the field. Such introductory overviews contextualize specific texts, traditions, and teachers, and enable you to gain a sense of narrative. That is, you begin to understand why someone in, say, 1650 CE was likely to express a theological viewpoint in a certain way, whereas someone in, say, 450 BCE had formulated this viewpoint in quite a different way. The umbrella term Hinduism encompasses a diverse and even divergent set of traditions. And the key challenge is to understand both the distinctive variations across these traditions and certain overlapping patterns of intellectual inquiry, spiritual discipline, and social living. The introductory text by Klaus Klostermeyer, Hinduism, A Short History, is a good starting point. You can build on your understanding with the more detailed introductions by Gavin Flood, an introduction to Hinduism, and Julius Lipner, Hindus, their religious beliefs and practices. Central to many Hindu visions of the human self, Atman, the divine self, Paramatman, Brahman, and the complexities of the everyday world, Samsara is the Bhagavad Gita, and the volumes by Catherine Robinson and Chakravarti Ram Prasad are helpful guides through its exegetical textures and socio-political locations. These are Robinson's interpretations of the Bhagavad Gita and images of the Hindu tradition, and Ram Prasad's Divine Self, Human Self, the philosophy of being in two Gita commentaries. One of the most distinctive aspects of Hindu socio-religious traditions is the conceptualization of the divine reality as the cosmic feminine power, Devi. The volume by John Hawley and Donna Wolf, Devi, Goddesses of India, is a good introduction to the multiple manifestations of the Devi and debates relating to the relation between cosmological visions of the deity and women's empowerment on the ground. In a certain sense, Hinduism is a conceptual abstraction. What you find in the socio-cultural densities of everyday living is not so much a scriptural principle as real-life people. So alongside an exploration of the philosophical and the theological dimensions of Hindu worldviews, it is important to study the socio-cultural locations of these worldviews. Three volumes by Joyce Fleckiger, John Hawley and Vasudha Narayanan, and Stephen Jacobs contain numerous vignettes of everyday forms of Hindu living. These are Everyday Hinduism, Fleckiger, The Life of Hinduism, Hawley and Narayanan, and Hinduism Today and Introduction, Jacobs. For around two millennia, Hindu visions of ultimate liberation from worldly finitude have coexisted, sometimes in an uneasy tension with Hindu imaginations of the social polity in the here and now. Over the last two centuries, these visions and imaginations have occasionally entered into volatile combinations with the idioms of nationalism, anti-colonialism, social identity, and collective belonging. A good starting point for exploring these dynamic complexities is the volume by David Ludden, Making India Hindu, Religion, Community, and the Politics of Democracy in India.